Let's talk about Netlist. What's up investors and welcome back to another video. If you're new to Netlist, they are on the OTCQB ticker in LST. This is a company that I first covered on the channel last year, but in the past couple of days, this stock has begun to make parabolic moves as they have just had some major news. In this video, I will explain what is going on at Netlist, why the stock's rating is being upgraded by analysts despite this being an OTC stock, and why I consider this to be one of the best opportunities on the market right now. If you like the content, help me grow this channel. Smash the like button and drop me a comment. Small channels like this only grow if the videos are getting likes and comments. So let me know if you think that Netlist is a stock to buy right now. I'm aiming to get 300 likes on this video, help me make it happen. Subscribe to the channel if you're new and hit the bell notification so you never miss a video with the potential to make you money. I want to point out that I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. Now let's get into it. So who are Netlist and what do they do? Netlist was founded in California in 2000. The company is a leading provider of high performance SSDs and modular memory subsystems to the world's leading enterprises. Netlist specializes in hybrid memory solutions. The company's patented memory technologies provide superior performance and high density in a cost effective solution. From database to enterprise applications, Netlist serves diverse industries that require superior memory performance to empower critical business decisions in today's data-driven environment. Netlist has a long history of being the first to market with disruptive new products, such as the first load-reduced DIMM. Netlist was also the first to bring NAND's flash to the memory channel with its NVVault MVD-IMM. These innovative products, built on Netlist's early pioneering work and other off-chip technology advances that result in improved performance and lower costs compared to conventional memory. Now this is an OTC stock, but that was not always the case. Up until 2018, Netlist had been listed on NASDAQ, but with their stock trading below the key $1 threshold since August 2017, Netlist failed to meet requirements for maintaining its listing on NASDAQ. Management had a decision to make and at the time decided to do a share offering and after the share price tumbled, decided against a reverse stock split to remain on NASDAQ. So they opted to drop onto the OTC markets instead. Netlist holds a portfolio of patents that many are considered to be seminal. In the areas of hybrid memory, storage class memory, rank manipulation and role and load reduction, amongst others. The strength of Netlist's patent portfolio reflects its many years of research and development and track record of being disruptive with new products to the market. Netlist's strategy is to marry its unique, broad-level intellectual property with a thorough understanding of semiconductor, building blocks, and system-level applications to deliver performance, cost, and time-to-market advantages to OEMs. The company's manufacturing and testing facilities are in China, but this is very much a global company with offices across the US, Canada and Israel. This is not your average OTC stock. And we can see Netlist products here, which is broken into three main categories. Enterprise SSD, Embedded Flash and Memory Modules. Their SSD and Data Center NVMe SSDs offer capacities from 1.6 up to 3.84 terabytes. While their Embedded Flash Drives offer top of the range, high performance reliability at a cost effective price. So Netlist has been flying in the past two days. We can see here looking at the chart since the beginning of 2022, that after initially dropping in January, the stock has been trading sideways for the past three months, consistently moving in this channel between $4 and $5.50. However, on Thursday, everything changed and with some breaking news, Netlist has seen a huge spike in trading volume and the stock went from just 390 up to over 650. So what happened that could have such an effect on this stock? So for anybody looking at this stock for the first time and not knowing any history about Netlist, Netlist have been locked in a legal battle with Google for more than a decade. Netlist's decade-long legal saga to regain the rights to the seminal patents and their value is nearly complete and we have just had a huge development in this case. Yesterday, Netlist receives a favorable order in the patent infringement case against Google with the United States District Court 
issuing an order granting Netlist motion for summary judgment on intervening rights as to claim 16 of Netlist's US 912 patent. As a result, Netlist enforcement of claim 16 cannot be abridged and may proceed unencumbered by Google's latest attempt to escape responsibility for their long history of using Netlist intellectual property without permission. The ruling stands as vindication of Netlist's rights in its decade plus fight against Google. We now look forward to a complete discovery of Google's make and use of infringement products over this period and bringing this case before a jury as soon as possible. So for anyone who does not quite understand the sheer scale of this patent infringement, the 912 patent is considered to be seminal. Seminal patents is defined as an invention so impactful that it creates or shifts the whole technology space. So this is huge. Netless believes that the teachings of the 912 patent can be found in various DDR3 and DDR4 server DIMMs as well as future products that will be produced under the DDR5 server standards currently being established in the industry. The court set a case management conference for June 23rd, 2022. So this case is finally nearing an end. Google have delayed this as long as possible over the years, hoping that Netlist would either go out of business or abandon costly litigation. Netlist has abandoned nothing. While Google has continued to grow and stands as one of the biggest companies in the world, Netlist has suffered all kinds of hardships. As we said already, Netlist has dropped from the Nasdaq onto the OTC and at one point neared bankruptcy. But now the tables have turned and the clock is running down on Google. Netlist have the money now to keep this battle going. As shown here in their latest earnings report that was filed this month on May 2nd, revenue has more than tripled to $50.2 million compared to only $14 million last year. And the gross quarter profit has also more than doubled to 3.4 million compared with only 1.5 million for last year's same quarter. Looking at the balance sheet, we can see that Netlist has total assets of $88 million and total liabilities of just 38. They have very little long-term debt and have, over, and have over $58 million in cash and restricted cash. Overall, this is a very strong balance sheet with a total asset to liability ratio of greater than two to one. Looking at the statement of operations, we can see that they have net sales of $50 million, which is greatly increased from last year. And after deducting operating expenses, this gives the company a net loss for the three month period of 5.8 million. Now there are two things that I really like in these financial statements. One is the fact that there is not significant management compensation, where sometimes in other OTC companies, we see management taking huge salaries despite the companies performing very badly. Netlist is seeing huge growth, but management compensation is staying quite low. The other thing that I really like to see here is that there is no goodwill on the balance sheet, which is something that I've spoke about a lot in recent times, so I won't go into this again here. This article on Seeking Alpha perfectly summarizes why Netlist is such an excellent investment opportunity right now. So I'll just point out the key facts here and I'll put a link to this in the description for anyone who wants to have a read of the full article. But most importantly, Netlist is in the midst of what may be considered the largest patent infringement lawsuit in history, but the company has also continued to establish itself as more than just a lawsuit. The author gives a strong buy rating to Netlist because of the potential to create history. Very few opportunities like Netlist present themselves to the average citizen in a lifetime. As I said already, Netlist has suffered many hardships over the past decade. The company was quickly approaching being bankrupt in 2020 until a patent validation saved its share price. This is a case which I spoke about in my Netlist videos back in 2021. The case of Netlist versus SK Hynix. That Netlist won and then the companies entered into a strategic partnership which is beneficial to both companies and allows Netlist to receive royalties from SK Hynix. But this is not all. To summarize, Netlist is in litigation primarily with three companies, Micron, Google, and Samsung. All of these lawsuits are big and winning any of these will see the company in a great financial position moving forward that would inject the company with cash and give them ongoing revenue from licensing deals. However, the lawsuit against Google 
has the potential to be the largest patent infringement lawsuit in history, which would mean it would be over $2 billion. At the very least, I think the combination of these companies' lawsuits could result in the largest patent infringement lawsuit in history. But with such an investment thesis being based upon decisions of a court of law, this brings risks. Netlist faces two main risks outside of general market risks. The first is that the company fails to win its lawsuits. The second issue is that the technology side of the company has a tiny market share in a very competitive field. While a small market share means that there is lots of room for growth, it also means that the company is in an easier position to be pushed around, which is actually something that has been repeatedly alleged in its lawsuits. So in conclusion, however, even with the deals across the stock market right now, I still believe that Netlist is an excellent buy. The company is a rapidly growing tech company that in the midst of what may be the most significant patent infringement lawsuit in history, while the journey is never smooth, I think that the next year will be fascinating for all Netlist shareholders. But I am not the only one that thinks Netlist is an excellent investment opportunity right now. Netlist stock has had its rating upgraded by Zach's Investment Research from a hold rating to a buy rating. Looking at market beat, we can see that Netlist volume on Friday was 3.8 million shares, which is more than six times above its normal average volume. So there is a lot of interest in this stock right now, but the average analyst price target is $10 with the stock being rated as a buy. Before I give you my conclusion on this stock, I would greatly appreciate if you could smash the like button and hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Amazingly, 75% of my viewers are still unsubscribed. That means that 75% of viewers more than likely missed out on the likes of Redbox, which I first alerted at $3.37 last week just before this ran to over $10 in less than 48 hours. So don't miss out. For my conclusion, I think there is a lot to like about this company right now. They're expanding rapidly and have a lot of potential for growth. But my main focus is on the lawsuits and the Google lawsuit in particular. As I said earlier, this has the potential to be the biggest patent infringement lawsuit in history. I feel that Google thought that they could drag this out and eventually that Netlist would either give up or go bankrupt. But somewhat surprisingly, this has not happened. Netlist have managed to stay afloat and have continued to battle and I think that they will reap the rewards in the end. Of course, there are risks that they do not win, but right now, I think that the odds are in Netlist's favour. So I see this as an investment that it has a very good risk to reward ratio. Remember guys that I'm not a financial advisor and this is just my opinion and not financial advice. If you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe, follow me on Twitter and I'll catch you in the next update.